I could be inside this dank, dark cave. Uh, shiny. Honestly, I kind of just want to get my mind up at this point. Uh. Mm, yeah, let's get our soul up, right? Okay, then there's going to be the shadow people. That's going to take mind. Take my money. Yep, take my money. Why are PhDs super expensive? Who loans that kind of money? Hmm. Any financial institution ready to profit from abusive interest rates and the cultural belief that a higher education is worth going into crippling debt? Score! Oh, really? Lucky us. Quickly apply for and receive some fat student loans and enroll in, in a phil uh, philosophy course. Welcome to the PhD philosophy program, your professor says. It's a pleasure to meet you, fine young minds. You're here because you have an unquenchable thirst for knowledge, because you yearn to understand your place in the universe. Hey. We're here to rescue some bros from a cave. Ah, yes, a cave of their own ignorance. I see we have a poet in the class. You need to know that, at its core, philosophy is about asking questions. But it's not really about answering those questions. It's just thinking about them. Really hard. Really? Why? That's a great question. You're clearly already a philosopher at heart. Here, have your PhD. Can I have one too? Another great question. Here, take one. Nice. Thanks. Go back to the cave prison. Go back to the cave prisoners. To present your philosophy-fueled argument for leaving. So I know you probably want to know why you should leave the cave. Whoa. But we just learned that philosophy is about asking questions, not answering them. So I ask you, why not leave the cave? Hmm. Yeah, I guess we can't really argue with that. Prisoners say, we'll come with you. Woohoo! You gained plus three soul for your successful rescue. Hopefully it was worth the, the minus three money. You'll be paying off your loans for the majority of your life. Lots of weird gossip out there. Hi. Okay, mind up, baby. Mind up. Let me get that mind up. Mind up. End of the world summit, baby. Mind up. Yep. Classic trolley murder. <laughs> that I ended a whole timeline and you can too panel <laughs> fuck yeah you understand the basics of villainy but now the now's the perfect time to learn from the experts welcome to the I ended a whole timeline you can too panel I'm your host evil joy here with my co-host evil faith the panel begins you're so invested that you forgot to be alarmed that they're discussing ending your world in plus your mind Set to wrap up, just remember, incapacitate your non-evil twin, keep monologuing to a minimum, and when all else fails, C4 prevails. Thank you. We've reached the Q&A portion of the panel. Does anyone have any questions? This is a question for evil joy. Are you doing anything later, babe? How strange, my entire afternoon is booked solid with avoiding Salome like the plague. Next. Hello, ladies. So you claim you destroyed your timeline, but really, its collapse was actually caused by Evil Hope ditching you to join our timeline's coven. She only left your timeline because our coven persuaded her to join them. So the real credit for ending your timeline goes to this timeline's coven, wouldn't you agree? Evil Faith pulls a gun out of her purse and shoots Leonard in the knee. <laughs> After that, the entire Q&A line hurries to sit back down. Psst, sorry. It's your chance to ask a dumb question totally prank the Evil Coven. Go for it. Yeah, sure. Prank the unhinged supervillains who have magical powers and a fucking gun. Seems legit. What question do you ask? <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't listening. Please repeat the panel. Of the two of you, who is the most evil? We're betting on it, and I'm pretty sure it's evil fate. What do you think? Who is faster, Superman or me? Then proceed to run around. <laughs> well, that sounds like stamina. That sounds like money. That sounds like third option. Which is... Well, fuck. This one's definitely stamina, but I feel like they would hurt you if you did this, right? Like, they would harm you, which is usually a loss of stamina. But maybe they're going to put a curse on you that, like, drains your magic or something. Because if we're taking bets, we're... Excuse me. No, we're not doing that. Nobody wants that. Actually, one of the convention staff says, You are contractually obligated to repeat the panel if the audience requests it. What? We never signed a contract agreeing to those terms. Yes, you did. Remember that agreement you signed to get a free bottle of water during the panel? Check section 13B. Upon request from an audience member, panelists must agree to repeat the entire panel. But why? Just why? It's a convention made by villains for villains. Duh. We were obviously going to trap you in a, in a predatory contract. I never thought going to a villain convention would mean the people would be villainous to me. Ah, fuck you all. I guess we're taking this from the top. The evil witches repeat the whole panel from the top to bottom. Ha! Got him. 
Unfortunately, it turns out that listening to the same panel twice in a row isn't fun at all. Wow, I'm impressed, Zoe. I thought anyone could make pranking boring. I'm truly on the fence between feeling impressed or bored. You definitely lose minus three hype rewatching the old panel. At least you didn't get shot. Resources are like rumors. They can get really weird. All right, let me get hype or money. Hype or money. Money up. Money up. Money up. It is. Do the art exhibition. Money up. Art is beautiful. Art is emotional. Art is raw, unfiltered. Yep, yep, yep. Inspiration. Interpret the art. Let me get paid. Greetings, my friends. Yep. We saw you just today. <laughs> oh yeah, it is like fuck Mary Kill, right? Uh-huh. Stamina. Soul. No, it's a uh, Oh, what was it? Let's Mary. Hey. Ugh, why do you always choose Mary? It's the most vanilla one. What's exciting or sexy about making a long-term commitment to your soulmate? So why people get married? I thought it was so they could get a cool hyphenated last name. Or because you lost a bet. I should know. Yeah. Uh, marriage began so powerful families can mutually increase their wealth and their political power. I refuse to marry these days in protest with the capitalistic nature of it all. Yeah, that's why. Wait, this is been there. So you're saying if I marry this painting instead of buying it, I'll get more wealth instead of spending money. I mean, I wasn't really saying that at all. <laughs> but I've always wanted to attend an art wedding, so I'm not going to talk you out of this. Rich guy pays you plus three money for your consultancy and gives you a no wedding invitation. Woohoo! The side of the wedding sucks, the groom's side is all snooty rich assholes they are no fun to talk to. Meanwhile, the bride's side is just other paintings they can't talk at all. Paul, I was right. This is what you get for choosing the most vanilla of the three options. Rejoice in your minus three hype. Lots of weird gossip out there. Hey. I memorized the wiki. Moss coming in clutch. Hype up, hype up. Come on, let me get some hype up. Hype up. Hit the battle royale, baby. Resources are like rumors. They can get really Hell weird. yeah. Time to stop you some rest. We all good here. <sighs> Sometimes you update my fanfic. We all good here. What's our Hell, you could even take one off the top. I'm still good. But wait, there's something else. We did it. It's time to engage some cryptid butt stuff. Let's go. I'm about it. Scripted prom is here. Wait, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to see everyone here. Oh. I actually recognize a few of these uh, cryptids. Anyone would think Monster Prom was enough pressure for anyone's art. But nope, here we go again. Hey, you know what? It's great. You make lots of cryptid friends. And it also has the wonderful things that made Monster Prom so cool. Butt stuff, romantic slow dancing, wacky hijinks, quality time with your friends. You even help some cryptids that are super nervous about prom. You went, you went through this already, so you assure them they've got this. Ah, Prom, you could do this again and again. Then you sort of can just by playing Moss Prom again. You even have Moss as your link into Cryptid Academy. Where is he? There's big guy in the back. But wait a minute. Where's Zoe? Shouldn't she show? Wait, no, she doesn't show up in the things, does she? No. Oh yeah, there's a glitch guy. Oh, is that supposed to be missing now? Okay. That that's what they were hinting at with the okay. Tells you all the hot gossip which lets you know who's who around here. There are jocks, mean girls, party animals, even a hot bad boy. He also tells you all the secrets to optimize your run at, cri at Cryptid Prom. Which items to buy from the shop, which stats to maximize, the answers to the bathroom riddles. This makes you think Monster Prom was everything was everything to you, but Cryptid Prom might be everything to other people. How many other monster proms are out there? Plant prom, hell prom, home appliance prom, Liam prom, prom, but everyone is secretly robots controlled by raccoons. There are millions of other people out there living their little personal adventures with their own casts and goals. You hope they're all winning. And if that was enough, you're probably the coolest cats at Cryptid Prom. Oh, hey, there, yeah, that long faced guy. Yeah, long faced guy. Hey, what's up, buddy? Where's the one human girl that tagged along, huh? Come on, you're not gonna include her? You helped out not one, but several cryptids get here in time. There's Blurry Betty, or you think it is. She's nowhere to be seen, but you guess she'll appear later in the prom picks. 
There's that glitch dude. You keep a safe, a safe distance, just in case. If you want to deal with any error message windows for now. And there's everyone who you helped breach the containment facility. There's the shy dude. He's not so shy anymore. They're hugging some sandals and everyone is complimenting them on their beautiful feet. You see the difficult to destroy dinosaur. They brought a date and it's... Lobbert? Wowie, someone might finally get destroyed tonight. Wink. And there's even the human. She looks like she's close to having a stroke. A while later, she's nowhere to be seen. She's been murdered or did she get laid by a cryptid? It'll surely be both a creepypasta and horny gossip material by tomorrow. Basically, you all have a legendary night, which ends with a super cool musical number. Cryptid prom. Hell yeah. Your greatest memory of that road trip isn't cryptid prom, but a night in the car with Moss. It was just the two of you looking at the stars. I'm the moth to your flame. You know, Zoe, I like thinking of the stars as big relentless fires burning in the sky. That's such a nice thought. Yes, the same way stories happen around a fire, constellations form around stars carrying old stories from a past time. Such is the power of gossip, from stories told and retold. Sometimes they ascend to the sky and become immortal. You must know by now, I do love gossip. I noticed. But let me tell you something. He leans into you and whispers his warm breath on your ear. There is also power in stories never told. To hold something against your chest, to carry its magic to the grave, a secret of yours, a secret of mine. What if we did that? What if we turned tonight into a gossip of two, a story untold? Then he kissed you, and then, well, that is something you will hold dear against your chest, close to your heart. It was totally blood stuff. Hell yeah, we hit all six base destinations, baby. Let's fuck a go. And just like that. Unlocked. Something awaits you at the end of the road. This content must be enabled in the customized menu and it's tied to a series of trigger warnings. We advise checking them before enabling it. End of the row. Be aware of this content can at times feel much darker and heavier than the game's usual tone, dealing with themes such as existential dread. Also due to potentially off-putting visual and audio content, this might not be suitable for people with photosensitive epilepsy or claustrophobia. Alright, well it is enabled, and that's what I will be doing in the next recording session. Unfortunately, we'll have to wrap it up here, but yeah, for sure, the next recording session will be our last one. Um, if I remember correctly from what I you know, read up on before I started playing the thing about end of the road is like you don't need it you can't let any of your stats get too high you can't let any of them get high enough to get an ending and you have to keep going for several weeks which is definitely going to get interesting later on for sure especially as like the stat um, changes start getting higher like you know in the first couple weeks they're like plus two minus two and then around like week five, it gets like plus three, minus three. So when the stat changes start getting a lot more severe, it's definitely going to be something you want to pay a lot closer attention to. But uh, yeah, in the next restart, re oh, Jesus Christ! In the next recording session, I will start up our final round of Monster Road Trip for the end of the road storyline, and uh, that will wrap it up. Very excited to see how it all comes to end. I've really enjoyed this entry in the game. I, I don't know if they genuinely have. I'm sure they've gotten like some negative feedback because people are just you know, die hard about like the original formula for like prom and camp. Sure, but honestly, I I don't know. I haven't heard really anything negative about these games, and I honestly I don't know why anyone would have anything negative to say about this game. It's been fun as hell. Like, if I weren't doing this, like, as a playthrough type thing, I'd definitely be willing to spend a lot of time trying to, like, do as much as I could and see as much of a, as I can, like you normally would with any of these Monster Prom Universe games. But yeah, like I said, we'll begin the end in the next recording session, but for now, face. What is up, everyone, and welcome back to Monster Road Trip. In the previous recording session, we wrapped up the last of the main endings, right? We hit the final, we hit the sixth destination, so we unlocked the end of the road storyline, which I've been looking into it a bit more, you know, making sure I'm adequately prepared, and uh, it's gonna be rough. It's definitely gonna be rough. Um, 
so here's the thing you'll know in our previous runs right usually to get like the full endings or to at least try to get the full endings to like complete a store to complete the main store the side storyline to complete the date ending to build up stats to our destination would usually take about four in-game weeks right so to just start the end of the road content you have to get to at least week nine just to start it and then you have to play all the way through through week 11 all the way to the end of week 11 and uh so you'll you'll probably notice you probably have noticed i mean that uh you know in in previous runs our stat as the weeks go on the stat changes get more drastic it starts out at, at like plus two minus two and then i think by i heart the highest one we ever got was like plus four minus four and uh by the end of this it's going to be up to like plus seven minus seven from what i've read in the guide so um yeah no there's there's a lot to fucking consider here so i will be honest yo full honesty full transparency i do have a full guide pulled up like before i was just looking at a guide that kind of gave me a general overview of how things work it wasn't giving me any you know tips tricks or like the actual answers for everything but legitimately at the top of the guide while i was reading this it's like listen if you want to see the end of the road content and want to actually see it all the way through to the end do not take chances use this guide and honestly, if it weren't for the fact that I'm doing a playthrough of it, I probably would at least try and do a, s a single run, at least, myself, just to see how far I could go. But since I am doing this, yo, as a playthrough, you know, I don't want to just sit here and get stuck in one spot and then have to start all over again and keep going at it over and over and over again. I want to be able to get there and get to the sweet, sweet story content. So I do have a full guide, and even this full guide, there's no guarantee that even with the full guide, I'm going to get it in one run. This full guide is going to absolutely help, for sure, but there, there's no guarantee, right? There's no guarantee that just having this guide is going to, yo, put me there perfectly. Because, yo, locations went and whatnot are randomly generated and shit. Yo, they say, oh, we recommend this hitchhiker doing these events, but... They're just recommendations, right? They're not guarantees that, you know, you're going to get anything out of it. So, yeah. With all that being said, let's jump back into it. We're going to start another run. Like I said, I got the full guide, and I'm going to use the full guide here. And we're going to see what we can do. <laughs> Can't wait. Untangle my tentacles first. So first up does not matter. Uh because all our stats are the same. So it's a coin flip. I don't think I've seen picnic spot yet, so fuck it, we'll go there. Why not? The sun is shining, the birds are singing, and the ants are eagerly anticipating eating your scraps. Oh the what a perfect day for a picnic. You've got your picnic basket and your checkered blanket. All that remains is deciding what to do now that you're here. Oh, sure. Let's just crash other picnics. Why not? Why make your own picnic when you can just crash someone else's? After vetoing an awkward company picnic and a family exclusively eating cottage cheese, you and your friends find the perfect picnic to sneak into. Party time! Guys, that picnic looks poppin'. There's got to be at least 50 people over there. They've even got a DJ. We're gonna get in, though. Bouncer seems strict. He's not letting that bear through. <laughs> Rain on the list, pal, says the bouncer. Get your furry ass out of here before I kick you out. Wait, is that Liam waiting in line to get in? Hey! Liam! Liam! Hey, Liam! It's Scott! Your friend! Hey! Hi! So mainstream. Oh, great. Even you guys know about this place now? Please tell me this picnic hasn't become mainstream. Hi! Hi, Liam. And just curious, would you be down to let us exploit your friendship and use you to get into that picnic over there? Ugh! No oh, way. This is THE DJ Honey Dijon's Picnicking Extravaganza 20XX we're talking about. 
It's the hottest locale for trendy picnicking aficionados, or anyone who just enjoys snorting cocaine off a checkered blanket. Wow, so you get invited to one exclusive picnic DJed by a mustard bottle and think you're too cool to hang with us? I thought we were friends. <gasps> we are friends, I swear, I'm not trying to be a dick. The truth is, I'm barely cool enough to be here. I'll have my hands full just talking to Bouncer and letting me inside. I don't have a way to get you in too. Wait, have I done this one? William's a bust, but you won't be deterred. Here's how you're gonna crash this picnic. Yeah, I did the trench coat one, didn't I? Right, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you're, they're like, oh, I'm some royalty, and they're like, oh, right, of course, my bad. Take your chances with the guest. I guess we're gonna do the other one then, because I've already done this one, so why not, you know? By, cla by claiming your names are the most statistically common names John Doe, Giacomo Calzone, and Password1234. <laughs> Great idea. Deb's on password1234. That's my stripper name according to funnamegenerator.com. Awesome, bro! Cool. I would be Giacomo Calzone. I always wanted to be Italian when I grew up. Hmm. That's your big plan. I wouldn't be stupid enough to think those are real names. You'll just see about that. Sign up to the bouncer and introduce yourself as THE John Doe. Ah, oh, yeah, of course. Be plenty of work, Mrs. Doe. You and your friends can go ahead inside. <laughs> no way. Why the hell did that work? Hey, hey, back up. What do you think you are, pal? Welcome to Liam de Leon Core. I'm a level 2 moderator on the DJ's exclusive server. Come on, I gotta be on the list. Liam de Leon Ha! <laughs> That's a fake name if I ever heard one. There's too much alliteration. What's a Leon? What's a Lion Court? Don't Lions live in prides or something? Get out of my line. It's a bad day to be Liam. Not your problem, though. You and your friends enjoy the picnic and gain plus your stamina, eating delicious hoagies. Real John Doe, Password1234, and Giacomo Calzone get turned away when they show up, though. Password1234 sobs fill the air. It was her birthday, and her one wish was to get to this picnic. You lose soul for ruining her day. I think I'm ready. That's fine. I can live with that. Okay, oh, we do have a soul up. Cool. I'll take- oh, damn, we got two souls up. Oh, interesting, interesting. Well, now I'm curious. Is, is there one where we can get soul up, but stamina down? <laughs> just to keep things perfectly maintained? I'm, I'm just curious. Okay, so there's nothing we can do to get soul up, but also stamina down. So let's just go to one. I haven't, I don't think we've seen the animal sanctuary, so fuck it, we'll go there. Welcome to the Animal Sanctuary. Even as a petting zoo, there are dogs, cats, goats, bunnies, alpacas, ducklings. <laughs> Kneel before King Fuzzy. <laughs> Hell yeah. It warms your heart to see so many animals being loved and cared for. Surrounded by all this wholesomeness and fur, what do you want to do? I want to volunteer with the rescued animals. You're checking the place out, booping snoots with all sorts of cute critters when you run into a familiar face. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Are you guys volunteering at the sanctuary too? Hello! Hi, Faith. I'd love to. Give animals who could use some volunteering friendship. Sure. Why don't you spend time with old Major? Seeing up there in years, could use the exercise. Woof, woof, woof. <laughs> I love you, old Major. That's my fetch. Last one to the dog park has to throw the frisbee. Polly, can you brush Annie the alpaca if you want? She's a very sweet girl. Mama like it. I'd rather brush your alpaca if you know what I mean. Huh. No idea what you mean, honestly, but I'm gonna guess it's a sex thing. It's usually a sex thing with you. You betcha. Well, I'm kind of working right now, but maybe we can brush alpacas when I go on break. Uh -huh. Fuck yeah, boo. Tax me when you're free. And you, Zoe. What if you hang out with Colonel Grumpo? Ugh. <laughs> Faith takes you to the ugliest, grumpiest cat you've ever seen. If cats had phalanges, then this one would definitely be giving you the finger. <laughs> Colonel Grumpo was rescued from a really bad situation. He has trouble trusting monsters, but I promise there's a sweet boy under all that radiating hate. Have fun. Great. Scott gets to play fetch and Polly's having car sex while you're stuck with the world's meanest cat. Oh, well, maybe we'll all be okay. Wait, did Colonel Grumpo just steal your wallet? How? You didn't even see him move. You better get on this cat's good side before he does something worse. This cat obviously lost faith in people due to Monster Kind's inevitable descent into idiocy. Show him there's still hope by showing off your extensive classic literature knowledge. Oh, Jesus. Or show Colonel Grumpo you're the real deal by giving him what all cats want most. The chance to drive a Ferrari. Uh, I mean, this sounds like it'd be funny, so fuck it, we'll go with this. In the time it takes you to convince a rental company to give you a Ferrari despite your horrible driving record, your friends have returned. <laughs> hey, 
You guys see the car out front with the grumpy cat in the driver's seat? It's so cool they're letting underprivileged animals work for Uber now. <laughs> Wait, is Colonel Grumpo in that Ferrari? Zoe, are you letting a cat drive? That's so dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pressed. I'm dead anyway, so who cares? Let's go for a ride with Colonel Grumpo. But let's do it! I have no sense of danger, and a cat show first sounds cool, so I see no problem with this. Grumpy Kitty, take us away! You all hop in the car with Colonel Grumpo and let him drive you to, into the sunset. So, is this a regular thing with you, Zoe? Every time you want to cheer a cat up, you let it drive a Ferrari? Pretty much. Nice. Cool, cool. Ow <laughs> I love sticking my tongue out the window. You're the best reckless driver ever, Colonel Grumpo. <sighs> At least everyone's wearing their seatbelts. That makes me feel marginally better about this extremely unsafe situation. You have faith a few extra white hairs, but your joyride is success. You can see a small smile on Colonel Grumpo's face as he snoozes on the steering wheel. You lose money on the car rental, but gain soul spending time with Grumpo. Hi. Hell yeah. Okay. Any chances to make money? Not the show. Maybe on the movie set? Maybe on the movie set? Can we, can we make money on the movie set? Alright, bet. We can make money on the movie set. Let's go. Everyone, at some point, wonders what it's like to be a movie star. And action. You still don't know what that's like. You're just a humble road tripper trespassing on a movie set. But this might be the closest you ever get to Hollywood, so make the most of it now. What do you do? We're gonna become extras. You all go to audition to be extras. Scott is super hyped to audition his street costume. Whatever makes him happy, I suppose. You're called into a room with the casting agent and a lizard man in a cardboard mask. How do you do, fellow kids? I'm the junior director of Hiding in Plain Sight. It's important that all extras be able to camouflage with the crowd. Hey! Hey, Counselor Flodge. You brought your costume from home, too? Awesome. How'd you know it was me? I mean, good job, kids. You passed the test. The most important role of the extras is to blend in. If you can do that, you're already an expert. Ignore him, says the casting agent. Scary's tried to throw him out six times, but he's got too many disguises and keeps pretending to be set pieces. Anyway, why are you auditioning as a tree? You know, this movie's set on Saturn, right? There are no trees. Even if there were, we could just CGI them in. Yeah, but I play a really good tree. Watch me act like I'm turning sunlight into food. Oh, wink. Guys, I think I'm killing it. Not happening. I'll even quote the script. Man, I miss Earth and trees. Or, I would if trees hadn't gone extinct a hundred years ago, ushering in an era of no trees, zero trees, okay? Just then, the director walks in and gasps, Who is this beautiful tree man? You are my new muse. We'll rewrite the entire script around this new pro <laughs> pro treganist The casting director's forehead hits the table. This is going well. Now it's time for you to audition. What part are you going for? Well, you see, everyone's the protagonist of their own story. Therefore, isn't everyone also the extra in someone else's story? Audition to be the juiciest extra of all. The lead role. <laughs> Damn, what an argument. Let's go. No, we have a lead actor already, says the casting agent. A weird proverb isn't going to make me want to recast that. You can still be an extra, though. You'll just see about that. You go to set and start filming the Saturn Saloon's shootout scene. This plan ain't big enough for the two of us, says the antagonist. Well, technically it is. Saturn is huge. But I'm gonna shoot your ass anyway. Oh no, they're gonna kill each other. Just like my father was mysteri just like my father was mysteriously killed eighteen years ago. Next you film the lovemaking scene where the protagonist bangs the femme fatale in an alien egg sack. You're there too, because reasons. Love is beautiful, isn't it? Reminds me of the love my father had for me before his untimely disappearance. I'm here! I'm in the sex part too! One fact, trees can have sex with themselves via pollination. I'll show you. Cut! The director screams, do not pollinate yourself. We aren't filming a porno. Are we? No, 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 definitely not. Time caught. It was just getting good. Plot twist. Here's a thought. What if the protagonist is Zoe's father and Zoe went back in time and watched her own inception? Say, so, yeah, that's the kind of twist that'll put me above that asshole M. Night Salamander. <laughs> okay, Zoe, you win. You can play the lead. Ooh. Ooh, with her trusty sidekick and best bro, Tree Scott, by her side, right? Nope. The producer said I'm only allowed to rewrite the script one more time before he slashes my tires. We're just adding Zoe. Aww. Okay, I'll just wait in the car then. I'm definitely not <laughs> gonna cry or anything. Ugh, poor Scott. He was sold for shattering his dreams, but being the lead plays pays better than being an extra, so you gain money. I think yeah. Alright, can I get soul up? I can. Well then let's go. Time to stop, get some rest. 
Let's choose wisely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call in a specific. <sighs> Some time to update my fanfic. A, a specific hitchhiker. Because according to the guide, Valerie is a good one to have, because she'll actually give you more total stats if you go to the if you go to Noodle's shop. That is, that is the one caveat. Is like she doesn't just give it to you, but like when you go to Noodle's shop, you get plus one resource just for swapping things out. So normally you go to Noodle's shop, and you're like, I'll trade this for this. But then with Valerie until you also get an extra thing added onto that, so it increases your total stat pool, which is definitely going to be useful. Week two, where are we going? Tangle my tentacles first. Give me money or soul. Oh, we got soul, baby. Oh, we got soul, baby. All right, secret government lab. I haven't been there yet, so why not? Are you a government conspiracy theorist? Well, you're about to be. Science! <laughs> Welcome to the secret government laboratory where all your favorite politicians order their scientists to play God. There are grisly experiments, mutated creatures, and crimes against monstrosity galore. What catches your interest? Hmm, let's see, let's see. Let me see if there's one where I can lose stamina. No, I can either lose magic, hype, money, or mind. Definitely don't want to lose money, but hype, magic, mind doesn't really matter. So, damn, that's a good question. Um, I'll sacrifice hype. Hype seems to be an easier one to get back if I need to get it back. So, uh, yeah, let's let's go check out the scientific test gone horribly wrong. Explore the lab. The whiteboards and notebooks are filled with theorems, field notes, and diagrams from the Kama Sutra. Weird. Polly, Polly, listen. Polly, check out this notebook I found. It's covered in weird metallic flavor ketchup. <laughs> the sexiness postulate. Isolating sexiness into a consumable form. <laughs> cool. It's nice that the science has found a way to give people the gifts that we were naturally born with. Day one. After experimentation, subject deemed scientifically unfuckable. Dr. Cox began administering daily injections of sexium thick carbonate. Sexium thick carbonate dosage increased. Subject is objectively more fuckable. Dr. Cox salivates uncontrollably in its presence. Day 7. Breakthrough. Sexium thick carbonate molecule bonds with sodium chlorider. <laughs> chlorider. <laughs> serum is much stronger now. With new serum, subject excels at sexiness experiments. Cox was physically removed from building due to twitching. <laughs> Day 10. Subject escaped. Too sexy. Cox dead. If you find this notebook, run. Now. Before you can decide whether to heed that blatantly ex expositive advice, you hear something growl from around the corner. It's terrifyingly arousing. Oh. I don't know how to do evil sexy noises. Holy shit! <laughs> Is that the creature? I don't know if I should fight, flee, or fuck it. Sexy in an I'm gonna kill you and feast on your corpse way noises. <laughs> what do we do? My head says I don't want to be killed by this monster, but my body says I want to be its chew toy for the rest of my life. This creature is way too sexy to unleash on the monster world. It'd leave nothing but cataclysm and, and wet panties in its wake. You need to overcome your libido and defeat it before it seduces you all to death. Summon the natural adversary of a hot buff creature, a creature with a hot dad bod, or challenge beauty standards and defend the sexiness of intelligence with a four hour long dissertation on Scandinavian films. Yup. There we go. You start your presentation, ranking every Scandinavian film by how much it made me aware of my own mortality. Mildly off-put sexy noises? <laughs> As a working eye, tell us more about the arrays of Dutch tilt angles in Western thrillers. Desperately vying for your attention noises? You say Ingmar Bergman's portrayal of his father is quite damning in Fanny och Alexander, but far more melancholic in Sundagsborn. What accounts for that change? Huh? Sorry, Zoe, can you repeat slides one through, uh, the rest of them? You basically lost me at the title page. Please pay attention to my gyrating abs noises. The sexy creature begins to weep tears of frustration, and its own tears melt into a puddle of goo and a floating fog. <gasps> Dang, is it weird that I'm still kinda attracted to this alien goo? Mama like it. I don't know, I get it. This goo is definitely at least semi-fuckable. True, you gain soul for saving monster kind from that creature's destructive, irresistible sex appeal. But you also lose hype because your Scandinavian film dissertation nearly bored you to tears too. Let's win this thing. It's fine. It's fine. Now maybe I can get that hype back. I sure can. 
Ooh, I can get it back at both spots. So maybe one has one where I can lose some stamina, you know what I'm saying? Alright, there's one where I can get hype and hype up stamina down. We're going to the Dooms Diner. Ah! Why has the car stopped? You're driving along what you think is an empty road until a weird salesman looking motherfucker jumps in front of your car. Good morning, future customers. Are you interested in making a deal? Maybe. What's the deal? God, Just no. ignore him, Scott. He's either trying to sell us a pyramid scheme or a vacuum, and I want no part of either. Why, never. This is no pyramid scheme. It's a chance to buy into my incredibly lucrative essential embalming oils business. You only have to invest $2,000 to get your first salesman kit, but you'll earn the money back if you find customers to buy your luxury oils. You can earn extra by recruiting five other suckers, I mean, <clears throat> sellers, to these kits, and you'll earn commission on their sales. <sighs> So to clarify, you're at the top of this oil selling chain, so you'd be making commission on our sales, right? Right. And in order for us to earn any commission ourselves, we have to sell these kits to at least five people. Right. And then those five people have to find five more people apiece to get their own commission, and then those five people have to find five more, and so on. Right. Okay, you lost me. So if I draw that chain of command on this piece of paper from top to bottom, what am I drawing? A triangle. Jeez, you're persistent. Look, if you're gonna scam us, you can at least pick a scam that isn't so overdone. Makes it up a little. Yeah, he could try something like the circular scheme. You're still scammed, but at least everyone is equally scammed. Or the truncated icosahedron scheme. You're still scammed, but it's a very sophisticated shape nonetheless. Um, second one. Wow, such a beautiful complex shape. A truncated icosahedron scheme would be a geometric wonder of a scam. Ah, uh, scammer after my own heart. You're also enamored by the beauty of ill-gotten income. Mm. Nah, not usually. I'm just really high right now. Polly, I have a question. Polly, what's a truncated ice cream ahedron? I'd be happy to explain the truncated icosahedron to you, my boy. For a fee, of course. Sure, knowledge is priceless. Take our money and educate us, oh geometry mummy. With pleasure. So the truncated icosahedron is a three-dimensional shape with 32 faces, 60 vertices, and 90 edges. And it's used to calibrate atomic bombs, manufacture soccer balls, and scam gullible ghosts and werewolves on the side of the road. Oh, I got it! Oh, no, no, use, they use math and soccer. I have so much to learn. And I have so much more to teach you. For a fee, of course. Yes! Yes, let's go. Tell us about the snub cube next. Polly starts making it rain money over the salesman while he pulls out a blackboard and a textbook. A uh, car pulls up behind you and honks its horn. Would you move? The driver shouts. You're blocking the road. <gasps> Kinda, asshole. It's geometry time. Either drive around or pull over and learn about shapes. You gain mind over the next several geometry lessons. You also make some people late to work, but hey, not your problem. You read about this diner in a listicle of the, oh yeah, top ten diners. <sighs> Breath of stale air. All right, use the jukebox. You enter the diner and approach the jukebox to play some tunes. Before you can pick a song, your eerie waiter shows up to ruin your good time. I wouldn't touch that if I were you. Uh, what? You were us? When were you us? I never noticed. It's okay, Scott. Shh, Scott, it's okay. Charles, stop confusing Scott with your past conditional tenses and be of service here. Oh. We're obviously not you, because unlike you, we're cool and fun and sexy, which means we're gonna play some music. You think you're better than me? <laughs> cool, fun, and sexy is nothing on stress, depressed, and hot in a sickly Victorian child way. Besides, I'm trying to do you a favor. The reason you shouldn't use the jukebox is because it's cursed. Ha! The only cursed thing here is this picture I found of a squirrel that ate a whole melon. Nice. How did the squirrel manage to fit a whole melon in its body, Gerard? It shouldn't be anatomically possible, Gerard. Look at the squirrel, Gerard! Ugh, stop. Your bubbly stream of nonsense is cursed enough already. Go ahead and use the jukebox. It's your funeral. No, it's not. My funeral was in a way cooler diner. Say, so, choose a dope cursed track to play. Go full DDR and do Valkyrie Dimension and Beethoven Virus back to back. Or 10 uninterrupted hours of the Happy Birthday song. Yeah, no, we're going full DDR, baby. As soon as you hit play, all the lights in the diner go out. Demonic arrow shaped sigils appear at your feet. The devilish chimera song begins, and you dance faster than ever before. Your feet are a frenzied blur. What a tragic affair. This song is two of the hardest DDR tracks ever created, magically stitched together by a sinister necro dancer. Even I would never create a curse so despicable. The only dance moves I condone are the headbang and the stoic lighter sway, anyway. Huh? What? Intense. How long is I going to be dancing for? Who knows? You can't stop dancing. You dance out of the diner. You dance all day, every day, ceaselessly. 
You dance your way into your dream job. You dance during your wedding vows. You have children, and you and your beautiful family dance together. You grow old, and you're diagnosed with terminal dancing syndrome, and your doctor is also dancing. You only have six months left to live. Six months left to dance. You make the most of that time till you begin to see the light, and you dance toward it, ready at last for rest. The light clears, and you're lying on the diner floor. Everyone is staring at you. Then they burst into applause. You rock. Um, jeez, you broke the curse. You broke it with your sick, nasty moves. You gain hype for braving such a hard-ass two-headed song, but lose stamina because this was too much dancing for one day, maybe for one life. I've memorized the wiki. So I could still stand to make some money. Hmm. Doesn't seem like that's an option. Let's see what the cheap motel has in store for us. Maybe I can make some motherfucking money. Oh, I can. It'll be at the cost of my stamina, but you know what? We can work with that. Let's make some motherfucking money. Pizza! Ah oh, yes, the room that's just a hole in the floor. Hell yeah. Nice choice. You joyfully lead your friends to the room you're staying in for the night. Or sleeping in a hole. You're joking, right? Nope, no jokes. This hole is, our, is now our overnight home. Isn't he great? That's, ah. Uh, Come on, Polly. You can put a positive spin on this somehow. Man. I like how being six feet underground uh, reminds me of him. Is that anything? Hey. I like how there are no beds down here. I'm going to practice sleeping standing up like a horse. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. What do you want to do until bed? Want to play a sport you can play in a hole? Like what? Hmm. Like, hmm. Which sports use holes? I don't think of golf, but I think you have to be out of the hole to play that one. Maybe we could watch TV. Do holes have TVs? No, Scott. To be honest, the only thing this hole has are dirt, worms, and disappointment. Aww. Oh, so it's getting hard to be excited about this hole. You're getting the vibe that your friends don't love the hole. Why not something that'll make them love the hole? Where well, your friends see a hole, you see an opportunity for a treasure hunt. Grab your shovels, or who needs TV? Pass time by staring into complete darkness all night, gazing into the bottom of your own soul. Yeah, let's go for a treasure hunt. Let's do it! We can dig here? I changed my mind. This is the best hole ever. You, Paul, and Scott keep busy digging for treasure. Scott declines to use a shovel. He's just as fast with his hands and face anyhow. Housekeeping. Am I losing it, or is this thing getting even deeper? <laughs> yeah, but don't worry. It's all in the pursuit of treasure. <laughs> We're gonna be rich. Is the hole filling up with water? Yeah, Scott chewed up a water line because he thought it was a snake. He got all spicked, but he's all better now, aren't you, buddy? It was so long. So chrome. Fuck it. This is so far above my pay grade. Carry on. <laughs> Copy that. You dig all night, losing two stamina, and I actually do find some buried coins. You gain two money. Hell yeah. Thank you.